at the end of the day, you are trying to find out who done it, whether you're trying to guess yourself or whether you're one of those people like me who waits for Poirot to tell you because you don't really trust yourself to guess. Um, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, that is what needs to be at the core. And that is at the core of this movie. It is an honor to speak with you. How are you, sir? I am very good. Thank you. Um, uh, look, first of all, I love this movie. I think it's such a, a perfectly blended uh, murder mystery and haunted house film uh, combined into one. I, I love the movie. Uh, can you talk to me about working with Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh uh, on how his understanding of the character has evolved over these movies uh, and now and, and directs and stars in these movies? I think one of the things that Ken and um, Michael Green, the writer, have brought um, to these films is a kind of depth to Poirot that, that possibly isn't in there in the books. Um, I mean, in Death on the Nile, for instance, they actually go into a backstory, which is an invention of, of Michael and Ken's. They they kind of go through his First World War experiences and, and actually sort of use that to show where the moustache came from. Um, but I think what they add to what I would say is my great grandmother's stories is a kind of an analysis and investigation of Poirot. Um, and they are allowing Poirot to develop both in the films and throughout the, the series. So this film, you see, you know, Poirot starts, he's retired. Um, he seems to do a lot of retiring Poirot, but anyway, he's um, retired. And, and then you get Ariadne Oliver kind of taking him out of his retirement, taking him out of his shell again. And, you know, you see him move through the case and, and he is in a very different place at the end than he is at the beginning. And I think that is one of the charms of what Ken and Michael are bringing to, to the character of Poirot and bringing to my great-grandmother's work. Your great-grandmother's a legend. Why do you think Ag Agatha Christie's murder mysteries just transcend time? I think it's very simple. It's the stories. Um, the stories, you know, she had a genius for story. She had a ge genius for plot. And the great thing about great stories is that they stand the test of time. They don't age. They don't go out of fashion and you can adapt them in, in different ways. You can do different things with them in this film. You know, we've set the story in Venice, whereas originally it was set in, in an English country village and, and it, and it works. So, you know, if you've got the great raw materials and, you know, we've got the best raw materials, um, that's a great start. You are not lying. That is, that is totally true. Now, what excited you the most about bringing this book, the Halloween party to the big screen for the first time? Why was it the right one? to be uh, the third of Kenneth Branagh's uh, take on this famous detective. Well, Michael Green had a had a um had a thing about Halloween party a while ago. Um and I have to say to start off with I wasn't quite sure why he wanted to do it or actually what he wanted to do with it. And then two or three years ago I had a meeting with him with Ken Branagh with Steve Asbell from 20th Century and he kind of explained that having done two very traditional, very faithful adaptations in Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. He felt that we should do something a bit different for our third film. Um, and I think the main thing he wanted to do was, was something totally different. He wanted to play with genre. He wanted to add in elements of horror. And I think he felt that Halloween Party was a great launch, part, launch pad for that. He wanted to take some liberties with the story and he has <laughs> taken some liberties with the story. Uh, but I think it, it, it is all the better for that. I think what he has done is create an incredible movie and with Ken's obviously direction, they have created an atmosphere and a tone that is extraordinary and adds, a, adds an extra layer to the traditional murder mystery. Yeah, 100%. It does definitely add that layer. Can you talk about incorporating the horror element while still making it uh, feel true to this world? I think, you know, that is that is all Ken and Michael's work. Um, it's what Michael did on the page and what Ken did on set. Um, there is, you know, I think Ken Ken says that he, he used, you know, he, he deliberately scared the cast while they were on set. He, you know, he, he didn't tell them what was coming. So you know, some of some of the shock and, and fear is is genuine. And I think that all comes through. Um, but I think, you know, we we have a phrase we use here, which is an Agatha Christie experience. And every single project we produce has to has to be an Agatha Christie experience. And the thing is, whilst there are elements of horror here, it is still an Agatha Christie experience. It's still a murder mystery. At the end of the day, you are trying to find out who done it whether you're trying to guess yourself or whether you're one of those people like me who waits for Poirot to tell you because you don't really 
trust yourself to guess. Um, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, that is what needs to be at the core. And that is at the core of this movie. You know, I was just like you. I was trying to figure out who did it the whole way through. And every person that he would point to during the duration of the movie, I was like, yeah, he's completely right. <laughs> and I love the way that this story just unfolds. Now, do you know which mystery you'd like to bring to the big screen next? Or is is there another one that hasn't been adapted yet that you'd like to adapt in the future? I'm a great believer in in baby steps and not counting your chickens and not getting too far down the road. So you know, I I look forward to this hopefully being successful and then having a conversation with people about where we go next. Um, the great thing is my great-grandmother wrote, I think, 33 full-length Poirot novels. So we got an awful lot of material to choose from, um, all of which I think, well, most of which I think would make great movies. So uh, I look forward to hopefully having the privilege of that conversation, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Now, can you talk about what inspired the change uh, from the book uh, adapting uh, uh, the different location? I think, you know, this comes back. I mean, there are a couple of things there. Probably one of the things was visual. Um, Venice just has an extraordinary, um, you know, aspect that that adds something to the film. But also there is an element of Venice which plays into the tone. Venice has a mystery about it. Those canals wending their way through through narrow passages has an era of mystery of of you know thriller um and and that all adds into the layers of the atmosphere of the film so i think it's you know if you're going to make big films in hollywood you want a good backdrop and venice is an amazing backdrop but also if you're going to make a horror film you want something that has a little bit of atmosphere venice has an extraordinary atmosphere and, and sense of mystery now uh the last question i have for you we've seen so many of these movies have uh, all-star cast and this one's this one is included in that are there any particular actors you'd like to bring into this world uh that that haven't been in it yet and, and just just for any future adaptation i try and um stay on my rails and and do what i'm do what i'm i'm good at so i don't kind of lend into i don't get involved in casting at that level and i don't um i don't really have dream um dream casts in that way um, we've been incredibly fortunate to attract the casts we've attracted. Um, I think some of that is down to my great grandmother, but a lot of that is down to Ken. Ken's an extraordinary man and an extraordinary director, and, and you know people want to work with him. He has a, I mean, obviously being an actor himself, I think he understands actors, and he, I think people enjoy working with him. So I, I, I leave all of that to the experts, and I'll, I'll deal with the bits that, that kind of pertain to, to our, our, our part in it. Well, James, thank you so much for your time. Hunting in Venice is incredible. What an incredible journey. And like you, I was guessing the whole way through. If I was guessing on my own, I definitely would have been wrong. But uh, thank goodness uh, the great detective was there. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.